Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to this presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Leonardo Milleri, and I work for Red Hat in the um, virtualization team. So today we are talking about uh, building containerized workflow for uh, with uh, virtual VDPA. I'm going to provide some background about the technologies, uh, VirtualU and the VDPA, and then present uh, the, the work that has been done uh, uh, by the community and myself for uh, integrating VDPA um, into container orchestrator like uh, uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift. I'm going to provide a demo that is uh, recorded and um, the current status of the development and the future steps um, in the development. Finally, a Q&A session by the end of this presentation. Okay, background, uh, which is the problem statement. It is to uh, accelerate uh, uh, high performance container uh, directly to the, f uh, for, um, yeah, at layer two, layer three, uh, without vendor specific solutions. So one of the most popular solution is um, uh, SIUV, that stands for single root uh, input output virtualization. So this solution, uh, though, is dependent uh, on, the, on the physical NIC. So th this is why the uh, VDPA comes into play by providing uh, containers and uh, VM uh, with, um, mm, let's say, a decoupling from the physical NIC. So accelerating means uh, to to forward uh, packets as fast as we can uh, from the container uh, VM to the physical NIC. Uh, quick mention to Virtio. Virtio is a specification for um, for uh, interfaces, uh, uh, different type of interfaces for virtual machines, especially uh, like network and storage. Uh, it also defines the, the layout of the device and uh, the interaction of the device with the, uh, its drivers. Uh, some of the things relating to um, the, the interaction are the feature negotiation between the device and, and uh, the driver in order to um, establish, for instance, uh, vertices that are able to let you to exchange data between the, the host and the guest and uh, transport parameters like PCI. Uh, now, okay, what is VDPA? VDPA stands for Virtual Data Path Acceleration. Um, so the basic idea is to take the, the virtual net interface and push it directly to, to the physical link. Uh, there are two main aspects of uh, Virtual IO. One is the uh, data plane that follows the Virtual IO specification, so it is standard. And the control plane is vendor specific. Uh, so for this reason, it is translated by uh, a shim layer called uh, the VTPA framework that is able to, um, to convert it to a generic control plane. Okay, just a quick mention to the VTPA framework. I'm not an expert of this, but just, uh, uh, yeah, just for completeness. So there are, mm, from top to bottom, there are, for instance, containers and uh, VMs. The, the container is, um, is provided a virtual IO net interface that goes directly to the kernel subsystem. And uh, the, uh, the VM is instead provided a character device that, is goes, that goes down to the vhost subsystem. Uh, then, in the middle of the picture, we have some components, uh, the, the main components of the VDPA framework, like uh, the virtual VDPA bus drivers and the VOS VDPA bus driver, and the VDPA device driver, that is the abstraction for the physical device. Uh, 
Okay, in the bottom part of the picture, we have the hardware blocks. Uh, so this is a, a compliant VDPA card. Uh, as said, uh, we have a Veritario data path, standard one, and uh, a vendor-specific um, control path. Now I'm going to talk about uh, the, uh, the work that has been done for integrating in Kubernetes and OpenShift. This is for introducing the, uh, how a worker node is deployed in terms of uh, main components and the, the uh, OVS hardware offload. So uh, from top to bottom, we have the OVN controller that is complementing the, uh, the capabilities of OVS and providing virtual network abstractions such as uh, layer two overlay, layer three overlays. And down below we have uh, OVS, that is a multi-layer virtual switch for forwarding packets from, from uh, between the pods and from the pods to the physical network. And uh, then in the hardware blocks, the, the physical NIC is um, configured uh, typically in uh, switch dev mode for, for the Mellanox, uh, for NVIDIA cards, for instance. So this is a, a software abstraction that provides open and standard Linux uh, interfaces that can be used by applications on top of it. And those, uh, so they are called the port representers, uh, P0, P1, P2 in the picture, and they are connected to the OVS bridge. Also, uh, with technologies uh, like SRV, the, the virtual NIC is uh, partitioned uh, into uh, different uh, virtual NICs that are called VFs. And uh, in the end, uh, yeah, when we uh, set up the virtual data path, we are having a one-to-one -one connection between uh, the container or VM directly to each VF. Uh, so how does it work in terms of uh, packet processing? Let's say when uh, the first packet is uh, received by the, uh, okay, it is uh, handled by OVS software. So this is called the, the slow path, but then any subsequent packet are, are matching uh, a flow that is installed directly in the virtual, in the, in the NIC card by uh, OVS and uh, uh, TC Flower. So this is uh, the, the, the fast path that is actually improving a lot the, the performances of OVS and um, also making sure we don't have a high CPU load on the host. Okay, that was just an introduction to of the hardware offload. Um, now uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some Kubernetes internals, which are the components that are, mm, uh, yeah, the most important components. We have Kubelet, that is not the node agent, and uh, the SRV network operator is sort of a software extension to Kubernetes that is. Um, um, uh, so it is uh, making use of uh, custom resources called uh, CRDs and uh, those are used for managing application and components in Kubernetes. So the, the main uh, the important uh, steps, the operations that the SRV operators does are mainly to configure the, the NIC in uh, switch dev mode and uh, then to create the, the VFs with SRV. Also, some VDPA devices will be created on top of each VF, so there will be the one-to-one uh, -one, um, relationship between the VDPA device and the VF. Also, the operator uh, will configure the, uh, the required uh, drivers in the kernel space, like VDPA drivers and um, vendor-specific uh, drivers, like uh, the, the Mellanox 5 uh, driver. 
And finally, uh, in the right hand of the, of the picture, we have this manifest that is uh, generated by the operator that is used by the device plugin that we'll see in a moment. So yeah, this is what happened. Oh mm. uh, yeah, I must have, okay. Okay, this is the, the second slide of the workflow. Uh, we heard the device plugin that is responsible for discovering the VDPA devices and to advertise them to, to uh, Kubernetes. So uh, let's say you can define some resource pools. For instance, you would, um, you can say, okay, uh, VF from zero to, to three is pool one and from four to seven is pool two. So you can arrange resources into resource pool. And then as uh, when you create uh, your first pod, the pod has to reference this resource pool in order to, um, for the device plugin to allocate the VDPA device in phase of pod creation. Okay, the, the final picture. Um, here we um, okay, quickly introduce in uh, CNI, that stands for Container Network Interface. It's a specification and libraries for writing network plugins uh, that are then responsible for um, configuring the network interfaces on the, on the pods. Uh, one of them is uh, Maltos, that is uh, sort of a meta plugin uh, that is able to invoke different other CNI plugin underneath. And uh, its main purpose is to actually create, uh, attach uh, multiple uh, interfaces to the same pod because normally Kubernetes doesn't allow you to, to have more than one network interface apart from the, the loopback. Um, Open Kubernetes is the other um, CNI here that is delegated from uh, Mutu CNI. Um, so, okay, coming back to, to the workflow, uh, now we have this network attachment component uh, object that is uh, for defining your network object. And there we have a mapping between the resource pool and uh, the, um, the designated CNI plugin, in the specific case uh, of in Kubernetes. Um, okay, so when we create uh, the pod, uh, we, may, we have to specify which is the network we are gonna use. Uh, defined by the network attachment, then multi CNI would delegate the job to Open Kubernetes that uh, will, will take the virtual VDPA device and move it inside the, the pod namespace. And the other thing would be to, um, to take the port representer and add it uh, to the OVS bridge. Okay, so by the end of this complex uh, interaction between uh, Kubernetes components, we are having a standard, uh, standard VDP interfaces created in the pod. That is the Ethernet zero in the picture. Okay, we are gonna have a demo. So this, this is just for introducing the, the setup. Uh, we have to uh, servers, bare metal servers. In one, we are running three control plane nodes in virtual machine. So it is actually an hybrid, hybrid cluster because the, the worker node is running instead in bare metal directly. And the, the two uh, machines are connected back to back with an NVIDIA uh, dual port NIC. The first port uh, is um, is being used by the default cluster network 
and the second port on the left is being used for the VDPA demo. Okay, here there is a link to the demo. Let's see if I manage. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's going on. So uh, I'm creating two, uh, two pods um, on the same uh, machine, on the same worker node, and uh, demonstrating that I can ping between uh, each, uh, between the two pods using VDPA. Uh, of course, we could have uh, tried that using multiple workers, but just for simplicity, I had just this, um, this setup. First of all, uh, we check the, uh, the state of the, the cluster and we create um, a machine configuration pool that, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll make sure the worker node uh, would join this, this pool. This is done basically by um, using labels. Um, we add this MCP label to, to the pool, to the worker node, together with uh, another uh, label that is the SIV capable node that is used by the operator in order to select the proper worker nodes. Then we create the uh, side of the network pool configuration. And um, this command would actually, will actually reboot the node um, and will configure the OVS hardware offloading on the worker node. Uh, probably something I haven't mentioned, uh, this is the, the side of the policy, so the, the operator, the cluster administrator instructs uh, the survey operator um, with this policy. Uh, so we are telling, okay, the, the name of the policy, uh, the node selector is used for selecting the, the proper work nodes we want to use for the configuration. <coughs> we specify the resource pool, MLX NIX, and the number of virtual function we want to create for this purpose, in, the, in this case, is two. The, uh, the next selector is used for filtering out depending on um, some parameters like uh, the device ID or the vendor, the multiple way of filtering the NIC devices. And finally, uh, we set up the switch dev mode on the NIC card and uh, we select the VDPA virtual VDPA interfaces to be created. Okay, just uh, a check that uh, we are having uh, no VFs before running the policy. So we can see there are no VFs created yet. As soon as we create the policy, the node will reboot again. Okay, check again the state of the cluster after the reboot. The, all the nodes are in the ready state. And uh, now we should have uh, two VFs created, VF0 and the VF1. And also, uh, two VDPA devices created on top of them. The NIC card is in switch dev mode and with uh, uh, OVS uh, with uh, hardware offload enabled. Okay, uh, if we look at the interfaces that have been created in the worker node, we have basically two port representers, Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1. 
that are connected to the OVS, OVS bridge. Um, and the driver is actually a um, Mellanox driver. Then we have the, the two VertIO VDPA interfaces uh, that are um, Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 3. And as you can see, the, the driver is uh, virtual net, so a standard driver. Okay, we created the network attachment definition. Uh, here, as you can see, there is the binding between the, uh, the resource pool and the oven Kubernetes CNI. Uh, and of course, uh, the name of the network that is oven Kubernetes dash A. Okay, this time to create the, the two pods, uh, pod one and pod two, we are creating them in the VDPA namespace. Um, so yeah, it is just uh, enough to put the, the network we wanna use in the, in the pod manifest, and uh, automatically the pods will get the virtual VDPA interface created. Okay, here there are a few checks about uh, the IP address, and um, as you can see, the driver is the standard VirtualNet driver. And uh, yeah, now we are ready to, to test the connectivity between um, uh, the two pods. We ping from pod 2 to pod 1. Uh, it is working as uh, expected. So yeah, this, this is the end of the demo. We have successfully demonstrated how to ping between two containers using VDPA. And uh, we can go back to, to the slides, I hope. Maybe this one. Yes. Okay, quick um, reference to the current status of art. Uh, so we have implemented this in the primary interface, in the pod primary interface using Oven Kubernetes. If you're interested in the source code of the community, we have um, a bunch of uh, repositories, the network operator, device plugin, Kubernetes, and GoVDPA, that is a Go library. And uh, Next step in the development are to support the secondary interface uh, on the pod. This is for enabling some other use cases like um, DPDK applications for uh, having user space packet processing, container native virtualization for running VM workloads alongside uh, um, container workloads and providing also accelerated uh, standard interfaces to confidential computing. Okay, this is the, the end of my presentation. Uh, I think we can take, we have time for taking some questions if you have any. Okay, yeah, the question is um, that, uh, okay, so we are having here, um, so the, the vendors are implementing uh, the data plane in Virtaio, and but they are not doing the same for, for the control plane. So uh, you're asking which is the reason. So the reason, uh, okay, um, we have uh, some vendors that are that now have implemented the VDPA, uh, virtual, virtual data plane, like uh, NVIDIA, um, I think Intel, Pensando, so there are a bunch of vendors. But uh, it seems that uh, the, the control plane, the, let's say the, the full uh, virtual offload, uh, offloading 
So uh, basically implementing the control plane uh, uh, with Virtuio seems to be mm, more difficult for, for, for the vendors. So this VDPA is a sort of uh, um, helping out the, the, the vendors in order to, to give them uh, more time. So it is, let's say, covering up uh, their, their need uh, and simplifying their life uh, for, yeah, for this transition. Any other questions? Yes, because, uh, okay, so the question was um, th with the network attachment definition, we are using the default network, right? Uh, the question is if uh, we are overwriting. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, you might expect to have uh, uh, two interfaces on the pod because we are using network touch de definition. But as I said, this is the, the first step in the implementation. So we are actually uh, using the default interface, the primary interface for this implementation. It is, of course, sub-optimal. Sub so the next step, as, uh, as I mentioned, would be to, to uh, create instead a secondary interface uh, and uh, then use um, vhost VTP instead. That can be also beneficial for other use cases like uh, kubevert, I think, and, and other, other things, yeah. Okay, the question is if I'm, we are looking already at uh, of VN Kubernetes since uh, the, the, the feature of support of the second interface has already landed uh, into, into OpenShift. And uh, yes, the, the, the answer is yes, because um, so we are now taking the first step investigating which are the, the missing, uh, missing bit for, for the solution. And um, yeah, I think uh, the, that is the plan. Yes? Uh, yeah, so for in this particular presentation, you mentioned just one network interface, right? So uh, the multiple CNI is not really necessary? Or can, can the VTP, uh, yeah, everything that around the VTP and CNI act as a primary CNI? Without multiples? Yes. Okay, so the question is uh, we are using we are uh, configuring the, the primary interface, but we are making use of Multus. So the question is why? Uh, well, um, I think we could have avoided probably to use uh, Multus, but it was convenient, uh, let's say, for this implementation because Multus is, uh, is brought in by, by, by default, by OpenShift. And uh, yeah, it is a, a convenient way for for doing this, of course, will be more uh, more useful in the future with the secondary interface. In that case, we we can't avoid to to have multos for 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 this purpose. Okay, it seems uh, we reached the end. Thank you.